All right, guys. I really hope you guys can hear me. It's kind of loud in here, like a, a blower going. Look at this. We're in a Kenworth dealer. And uh, man, look at all these trucks they got in here. It's kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, uh, today we've got we got Gage here. How's Gage, thank you uh, so much for meeting up with of me. Course. Thank you for coming. Really out. do appreciate it. Look at this box. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. How long have you had your box? Uh, coming up on a year with this one. A year. Fresh upgrade. Man, that's so nice. And I love that that two tone color with the red and the gray. Yep, it's my favorite color scheme. Oh, it's so nice. So today we're at Kenworth. How long have you uh, been working on semis? Coming up on three years now. Three years, yep. okay. Did you work on auto or anything before that? Automotive last? for three and a half years before oh, this. Three and a half, wow. Yep. So you've got some wrench time in. Unfortunately, yeah. Gosh, man, look, like this, even this top is like super shiny. Yeah, I, I polished it when it yeah. was new. It <laughs> came as a brush finish and being a semi guy, everything's Gosh, polished chrome, yeah. so. Man, that looks sweet. They should just come like that from the factory. They should. Goodness. Do you have a roll around card or anything? I don't right now. I'm waiting for one that actually is the same color to come out oh, so it'll match. Okay. Right on. That's cool. So I'll start with my favorite one. The sure. biggest upgrade for me is the power drawer. Oh man. So the last box didn't have one and it was kind of a pain having all the chargers stacked up on top. So sure. the power drawer was kind of a big one for me. So yeah. it's all integrated, USB, everything. Run all my chargers for all my lights, all my impacts, everything all in once. Keep it all in one drawer. Yeah. Man, that's sweet. So do you mostly use cordless stuff? Mostly, yep. I've got one half inch right there, and then I've got a three quarter gun that's being borrowed right now. Gotcha. Um, for head bolts, things like that. Oh, gotcha. So we were just talking a minute ago, so you don't do any like, like you do the engine stuff, yep. right? engine and emissions. I guess you use different tooling than some of the other guys. Yeah, so a lot of the chassis guys are gonna have a lot bigger sockets. Oh, lot, okay. That's where a lot of the bigger stuff is used for doing clutches, things like that. That all happens in the back shop. I don't oh, do any okay. of that, I'm all engine. So oh, a lot of it's so cool. a lot smaller. Man, so you're like, you're like taking stuff like this out? Yep, like, yeah, so anything there. from complete in-frame overhauls, crate engine swaps, all the way down to replacing a couple DPFs. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. So it looks like you're mostly uh, Milwaukee and Snap-on? Yep. Is there a reason you went with like a Snap-on ratchet that like looks like Milwaukee Impact? So I went with the Snap-on ratchets. I like the Milwaukee ones. The heads on these are just a lot more narrow. Oh, are so they? So you can sneak them into a lot tighter spaces. Yeah, yeah. The older Milwaukee's. They, they've come out with some new ones that are thinner, but I've already had these and oh, gotcha. they're not broke. Don't replace them. Yeah. So, but yeah, they were just, especially this one, when I was in automotive, they could uh -huh. sneak under dashes really oh, nice. Oh, yeah. And the Milwaukee one was just a lot bigger. That's sweet. So. You keep some air tools in here, I guess? Yep. Little stubby 3 eighths and then the half inch. Nice. But other than that, mostly cordless. Right on. Any big tire guns or anything we need like that are provided for us. So. Oh, okay. I was going to ask, like, that stuff could take off. Yep. Big stuff. That's cool. Right and on. then we've got a giant, it's an air pneumatic gun that can go up to, I believe, 3,000 PSI of torque. Whoa. One way or the other that we have in the tool room that just kind of rolls around in its own cart. Oh, and it, you say it rolls around? Yeah. It's, so it has its own <laughs> U.S. General cart that it comes with. Jeez. Because the head bolts are a 15 16 socket, so uh -huh. it comes with its own. And then it just sits in the cart. It's the head on it's probably about that big around. It weighs 60 pounds. Oh, and we'll use that a lot for removing head bolts, torquing head bolts, because you can adjust the air pressure uh -huh. to set it to a certain torque spec. No way. Up to 3,000, I think, pounds, foot pounds. Jeez. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, right here. So this is sockets, ratchets, um, and then just smaller bits, things like that, torque wrench, um, and then just feeler gauges that I didn't have room anywhere else for. Cool. Do you have a, a brand that you, you follow closely or you just, whatever works? So my impact sockets, I run Cornwell. Um, okay. I've had them for a long time and they've never let me down. So I've never really thought about upgrading them. Like these guys are still all Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Pro. Oh, yeah. um, the Chromies and the three eights I ran snap on. Um, nice. I had Cornwell a while ago, probably three or four years ago. Did you? They would crack really bad right on the oh, end of really? them. You put a lot of torque onto them. So I upgraded to the Snap-on ones and haven't had a problem. Yeah. So, but Snap-on ratchets, except for this guy. Okay. But Snap-on everything else. 
You have a go-to ratchet that you usually reach for? right here. Okay. Flex head three eighths. Oh, with the quick release? Yep, locks the socket in place. Yeah. I, I like locking flex heads for some things, but for the most part, I like having them be able to move freely. Yeah. You get in somewhere you need to knock it into a different angle with a bolt, you can just yeah. kind of knock it around. For sure. So that's kind of my go-to right there. And so are all of these snap-on then? So all these are snap-on. This one is a Matco, and then all of these ones are snap-on. Oh, and then man, another snap-on one hiding back here. Oh, okay. Look at that tiny one. That's sweet. Yep. Yeah, that you, surprisingly enough, I use this a lot on yeah. semis. I bought it when I was in automotive for doing like blend doors under dashes. Yeah. I use this guy a lot. That's awesome. That kid over there looks pretty sweet. It's yeah, like, Matco guy. That's that, cool. Yeah, he gave me a pretty good deal on it. I had a similar impact to this one that went bad, and I was looking to get a new one, and he said he had one of these kits, and I kind of like green, so yeah. just figured I'd give it a try. It hasn't yeah. let me down since. I don't, I don't hate the impact. That's pretty cool. Does this have more torque than that one then the they have about the same do they yep that's cool it's the one one thing i like about this one is just how small it is oh yeah and it it puts out the same amount of torque huh what are these are these just uh so these are torque adapters so oh, if you okay. need to like sneak into a really sneaky place put a ratchet on one end and then it's like a wrench on the other uh, end okay they don't no. use them a whole lot but the times you need them they really come in handy to have nice and so are most of your things metric yep so my standard is seriously these guys. Oh, is it really? That's it. Everything <laughs> else is metric. I've got a couple wow. bigger sockets that are just kind of thrown in my bottom drawer. Oh, if okay. I need them, I have them. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, that's my only standard is those chromans oh, right there. Nice. Everything else is metric. Coming from automotive, I didn't ever use standard. Yeah. But right. luckily with these, everything is kind of the same. You really don't gotcha. get into standard until you're in the bigger stuff. Gotcha. So. Okay. So this is my 3 8 torque wrench right here. Oh yeah. So that guy in the half inch one, it's brother that's actually, I forgot at home. I've been oh, doing okay. some work at home. Um, yeah. Use these guys for the angle. Cause on these pack car engines, you use a lot of Newton meters and a lot of oh, angle. Really? So this being able to do both of them, just press a button. I can yeah. switch from Newton meters to angles, the foot pounds, inch pounds, whatever wow. I want. So that's cool. Really helps. Cause you gotta be really precise putting these engines together. Sure, yeah. yeah. So you actually tear the, the motors down here? And yep, so oh, wow. if it, if the failure isn't too catastrophic um, and doesn't, I guess, like we say, leave the block, uh -huh. you can just do an in-frame overhaul. You basically, you can leave the block bolted in place in the truck and remove all the components out of it Whoa. and freshen them back up. That's crazy. It's like yep. an engine stand inside yeah, the... <laughs> pretty much. And then we'll go a short block, you pull it out, and you keep the block in the internals and usually the cylinder head and gotcha. kind of swap that around, put it on with the old head back on or a long block for the pack cars pretty much comes block, crank, pistons, and head. Oh, okay. So most of the time they come out, but like with the Cummins and a lot of the Caterpillars is what you do. It's called a platinum kit. Just oh, an in-frame okay. overall. You leave the block in place and rebuild it around it. Wow. Man, I was just looking at like, are those uh, like crank caps or something? So those guys. Main, main caps? Yep, so you'll have your main bearing caps right Gosh, there. Gosh, look how matte, like this is my hand. That's crazy. Yep, and then these are all just out of the Cummins gear train. You've got your cam and crank gears and your tone wheels. Wow. Yep. Goodness, that's insane. Yeah. Do you, yeah. So, is it like coming from automotive to something huge like this? Is it like a like a culture shock to have to be able to go in there? And I feel for a lot of people, it is. I grew up working on diesel pickups and diesel tractors. Oh, okay. As a kid, so it wasn't as big of a culture shock for me. But there are some people here who have come from automotive with no diesel, oh. and we get a lot of kids from the tech schools that come oh, in, really? and it is a big culture shock. <laughs> oh they, man. You can see the fear in their eyes sometimes <laughs> when they just see. It's just the size of everything that yeah. gets everybody. Yeah, they're mad. So if you have to take the motor out, do you have like a massive like crane or something? That... So yeah, we've got overhead cranes in the shop oh, right here. I didn't so even full see that. five ton cranes, and they can move anywhere in the shop and come over and they pick them up like they're nothing. Wait, so that could come right here? So in these side of the shop, we have to kind of push them forward to get okay. underneath. That's almost as far oh, forward as it goes. I see. Okay. Yep. But I mean, two guys with a pry bar, you can push one of these trucks forward surprisingly wow. easy. So we'll just push them forward a couple feet, pull the engine out and push them back. That's crazy. So this goes like all the way down the shop. Yep. So there's two. So you got one behind you and that one right there. Oh, wow. And then in the back shop, they've got the same setup, two of them down there. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. And are they, uh, I guess they're all electric. Yeah, they're all electric. They are impressive. They'll pick up one of these engines like they're nothing. Really? Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Look at that. So yeah, somebody who works on chassis side will have a lot bigger wrenches than this yeah. for things, but. <laughs> these are so clean and like organized yep. and everything. 
My goodness. I can't. I did automotive and I was flat rate for three and a half years. So having organized tools is kind of burned into my brain. Oh, okay. The quicker I can find them, the quicker I can do the job, the more money I make. Oh, okay. So you're you're hourly here. Yep. Oh, okay. Man, look at that. So do you put like paint these? Yeah. So I just use a paint pen. That I has... haven't gotten a chance to do them to all of them. I did them to these as a test, and it really makes them easy to see. But then I got wow. the new organizers that are white, so. That has got to be the cleanest paint job. So how do you how do you do it? So I fill them in, I take a paint pen and I fill them in and I let pen. it dry. Okay. And then I get brake cleaner on a rag and just very gently wipe over them. It takes off everything on the side, but leaves no it on the uh, engraving itself. That's cool. Huh. And then these organizers, are they, uh, who sells those? So these are just 3D printed from a local guy, actually. No way. Yeah. So he sells a whole set of them for, it was thirty-five dollars, and they all just kind of interlock together. They got wow. magnets on the top and the bottom. What? Yeah, just a local guy that three D prints them in his basement. Does he print like the numbers and stuff too? Um, yeah. So they're all the numbers are printed with it, and then I think he just took some paint pen or some nail polish or something, and went over it with the white. That is cool, man. That's awesome. Do you so like we, these mac wrenches? I do. For they were a really good price point, really? um, but they really. The grip onto things is pretty nice. They're not as nice as the snap-on flank drive, uh -huh. but I've never really had one slip off of anything gotcha. for me. They look like their angle is a lot more aggressive than the... Yeah, the way they do it's kind of weird. I've never seen it before, but huh. it, I don't know. I like That's them. cool. Right on. And then do you like these, uh, the icons? Yeah, I bought those just to try them out because those are the only standard wrenches I have, and yeah. I'm actually pretty pleased with them. Right I figured on. for... I think it was two hundred and twenty dollars for the set. I yeah. figured if they don't, if I don't like them very well, I can just keep them at home. Yeah, for but sure. I actually really like how they work. That's awesome, man. You have the whole flank drive set here. Yep. Other than the nine, I don't. I've used it once, and the one time I use it, it's gone. Oh no. So, <laughs> yeah. So do you polish these or what? Like, how do you get them so nice? So I do. I like polishing things. So when I get a new wrench, I will. <laughs> aside from these guys, I just ran some hand polish across them. Okay. And then I just every time I'm done with them. I mean, I'll have a pile right here. Before uh, I start the next job, everything gets wiped down with glass cleaner, gets cleaned, reorganized, and put back where it goes for the next job. So man. I polish them once, and then if you can kind of maintain them, everything looks like it's brand new after you're done using yeah. it. Yeah. Because the ones that show the most wear are like these guys. Uh -huh. That wrench is four years old. Oh, wow. And I mean, it's showing some wear, but I, you can wipe it right off with your finger. Yeah. So huh. I just keep them clean after every job. So do you like these? Uh, are these like the quick? Ratcheting, so uh, these guys ends. are the ratcheting ones right there. Uh -huh. um, the Cornwall ones, these are, granted, these are pretty old, and I've used them, and I'm not kind to them. Uh -huh. So they kind of skip teeth every now and then. I just haven't upgraded to the snap-on ones yet. Huh. Do you My like favorite. these, like, like the open-end design? Yeah, so this is a weird, everybody kind of weirds out over this. It's the same thing as the ratchet, just for an open-end. So if you stick it on a bolt, you can see it'll grab right there, uh -huh. turn the bolt, and then it lets you slip off it and round back. And oh, that's wild. So it's kind of like an open-end ratchet almost. Huh. So it's really, you don't use them very often, but when you do, they're nice to have. That's awesome. But my favorite ones are probably these guys with the ratcheting with the double Whoa. joints. Oh, you get so, into some tight spaces yep, with those. Yeah, they really let you sneak in and get into some weird spots. That is cool. Yep. Man, I can't get over these. Uh, like his organizers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is sweet. It's a guy that, so I live local to all my tool dealers pretty much, and uh -huh. I'm good friends with my Cornwall dealer. I go over to his house all the time. It's a guy that lives right in his neighborhood. Actually. No way. So my Cornwall guy just sells them for him. Wow. So does he have a, like an online store? I don't think so yet. He really? just started printing these two weeks ago, I think. No way. So he gave them to the Cornwall guy and our Matco guy to sell and kind of get a feeler out yeah. before he decides if he wants to make it a thing or not. Oh, that's cool. I think anybody that watches this video is going to want to know where those are coming from. And uh, what are those? These guys? Yeah. Just super thin wrenches. Oh, okay. So I use, the ones I use the most out of these are like the 13 millimeter. Uh -huh. Some of these pack cars have wiring harnesses along the oil pan and the brackets, I mean, you have probably that much room on the nut, oh, no so you can't fit a standard wrench on it. So huh. they're really nice to kind of be able to sneak in there. They're thin enough to get in between the wiring yeah. and the bracket to get in there. And then you can pop those wiring harness hold downs off. That's cool. But they do, like a lot of these, you don't use them very often, but when you need them, they're sure. really nice to have. Yeah. So yeah, these guys, not those ones, these guys. So these are just an offset wrench. I oh, use yeah. them a lot for valve adjustments. Oh, okay. You can kind of clear the rocker a little yeah. bit and get into the nuts to loosen and tighten them. Oh, that makes These sense. These were kind of an impulse buy. Really? <laughs> I didn't have a use for them. I just saw them and they were on a promo and oh, I bought them. Cool. You buy the metric, you get the standard free. I haven't touched a single one of the metric really? or the standard ones. It was an impulse buy. Uh, it looks so nice though. Yep. 
this is where it becomes apparent that I like green. Oh yeah. Pull it straight. Man. Gosh, you have like like every flyer snap on homes or something. Yeah, pretty much. It's they Goodness. they would sell them in like a three piece kit. Okay. And so over the last couple of years I've just ended up with all the kits. Man. So yeah, you definitely like green. Yeah, I started out with these Cornwall ones, and I just don't like throwing things away. So oh, gotcha. they're just kind of here for loaners or backups. Oh, or okay. When I pack a tool bag to go home somewhere, and yeah. just take the loaners and leave the nice ones here. Nice. So are these Matcos? Are these like the Nipix? Yep, so they're just Matco rebranded. Yeah, that's sweet. They are just, were green, so I liked them. And yeah. I, I bought them. That's Took the cool. uh, red ones home. Nice. Man, these are tiny. I've never seen those yep. before. Yeah, this is another Look automotive purchase. Just little slip <laughs> joints. That's so cool. So those came in a kit with those guys, the little wire cutters, and the small needle nose. Man, those are tiny too. Yep. Gosh. And actually, I use these ones a lot here, just sneaking into weird places. Oh, okay. Because all these trucks are massive, there are a lot of spots where it is oh, very yeah. cramped for room. I'm sure. Like that, got a lot going on in that. Yep. That bay. That's cool. And you got the. PWZs over there, yep. those are cool. Yeah, I use these more in automotive than anything. I have Is these it? and the bigger ones for like, just super quick to adjust alignments on the tire oh, rods. Okay. I think I've used them once here and I can't even remember what for. They just kind of <laughs> sit now. So do you guys do alignments on big trucks like this? So yeah, we have a full alignment rack set up in the other shop over there. No way. It's, it's up on stilts. The trucks drive on stilts for probably three and a half, four feet off the ground. And they drive over a pit so you can go underneath and Whoa. fully adjust the suspension on them. Wow. So I, do you I hook up like a, like a regular head? Yeah, to the... I think it's a, it's actually a hunter system. Oh, really? There, I think. Yeah, but it's just the no same as automotive. It's got the heads that go in the wheels. You roll it back and forth, huh. turn the wheels, and then set it. Wow, that's cool. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that, that was another impulse buy. They were uh, <laughs> yeah, they the same limited kit. edition, red, white, and blue. Wow, and it comes with the ratcheting? Yep. Look at that. Yeah, I bought those a couple years ago. Uh, that is cool. Man, I've never seen that. I, I say this a lot, that I've never seen stuff, but this is really like... Yeah, they only I, made... I think he said when I bought them, they only made about a thousand of those sets. No way. And my old dealer from my last shop had them, and I... Gosh. It was around the 4th of July when he had them, and I, I couldn't say no. It was an impulse buy. Man, that's awesome. And this, I've never seen the screwdriver set come with pry bars yep. before. That's kind of yeah, cool. That was the whole reason I bought that set was because I wanted these two pry bars. Yeah. And he's like, well, I can order them or you can just buy the whole screwdriver set. And yeah. I'm like, do you have it in green? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, ring me up. <laughs> <laughs> and you got some picks and stuff. Yep. Going down. Yep, got the picks, got the scraper tools, um, radiator, post clamp tools that we use a lot for oh, yeah. different things. Kind of the same set from Cornwell, but I upgraded to these and just kind of keep these as a spare. Oh, yeah. I use these more for, than anything for like disconnecting electrical connectors. Oh, a lot right. of the lock tabs kind of slide up in one piece, and so yeah. you can really work these under there. Nice. And then these ones mainly for if like a radiator pipe doesn't have a drain bolt, uh -huh. just sneak this into the boot and let it drain out. That's cool. Looks like you have an assortment of lights there. Yep. Yeah, a couple of them over here. Magnet lights and flashlights. So is this the Streamlight, the Stinger, your go-to? Yep. So that guy and that guy. Oh, you have a small one you too. You can tell that one gets a lot of use. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, uh, but this one doesn't get used as much, so it's kind of bulky. Nice. Uh, the main one that should be over here that's not, that's up here, is the headlight. Oh, okay. You so, use that a lot? Yep. Yeah, this is my go-to. Um, oh. It's one of the new Coast ones. It's got a nice focusing beam on it. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of my go-to, just huh. to keep my hands free, especially at night. It, just when the sky goes away, we have a lot of skylights where 90% of the light in here comes yeah. from. So it gets kind of dark at 10 o'clock at night. So yeah, this is another thing I forgot to mention. So, I mean, it's like eight o'clock outside now and your, your shift is still, uh, I'm four hours in right now. Yeah. So yep. you have until like one o'clock in the morning. One, one thirty. That's wild. So what happens if you're like working on something and like something breaks, like there's no parts house open or anything. So we have a full parts warehouse here. Um, oh, you're, Ken, you're, you're Kenworth we're, here. We're the dealer. Okay. So we're, no, we're the people that, like, <laughs> yeah, people dumb. come to us for parts. <laughs> I feel dumb now. And we're open the latest uh, out of anybody, so. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I was wondering that the whole time. I was like, what happens? If yeah, you I need just, a part or something. I walk up to the counter and tell them what I need. Yeah. And they disappear into our giant warehouse and come back with it. <sighs> that's cool. It's pretty nice. Yeah. So do you enjoy working at night versus like, I guess it's probably cooler at night too, huh? So it's cooler at night. There's a lot less going on at night too. Gotcha. On a full swing day shift, there's probably 35 of us here. 
and it gets a little chaotic. Oh gosh, So yeah. uh, less people here, it's just a lot more peaceful. Yeah. Kind of keep your head down and do your work. Wow. Play my music as loud as I want. Yeah. Oh, and then traffic too. So I live oh. 45 minutes north of here. Oh wow. So okay. dealing with like Hill Air Force Base traffic. Yeah. Uh, both rush hours got old really fast. Oh so gosh, So night yeah. shift keeps the traffic down, it's cooler. Yeah, yeah. And then this one is kind of a catch-all. So you got things like thread chasers over there and a little pencil grinder, all my dust caps, down to like my coffee, some food, bit sets, drill bits, and then things like the uh, little impact driver. Oh yeah. Just things that kind of don't have a very specific place kind of huh. end up in this drawer. Right and then also extra gaskets, injector lines. What was this guy? So that guy is just a thread chaser. Oh, okay, kit. that's a thread and chaser. And then this guy is a pencil grinder. What is that? That's cool. Yep. So it spins the same speed as a regular die grinder, but I mean, it's you can fit it into a lot of places. I use it for broken bolts. You got to uh, kind of drill okay, them out. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That combined with like the carbide bits Whoa. will really chew out a broken bolt. Those are tiny. Yep. That's awesome. And it's pneumatic, huh? That's yep. cool. But it sounds like a dentist drill or something. It, no, it really does. It's pretty <laughs> much the same thing with just a Mac Tools logo on it. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, kind of a catch-all. You ever need forks or straws, let me know. <laughs> Over here, I've got like left-handed drill bits, okay. regular drill bits, hyper steps. Oh yeah, the hyper steps. And then these guys come in handy. So like the bolt extractors that are grade eight steel, uh -huh. when those break off in a bolt, you pull these out. Oh, wow. So those are like a titanium carbide. They're actually extremely brittle, so you have to be really straight on with them. Huh. But I've used one of these and drilled straight through a bolt extractor no like way. it was hot butter. What? Yep. They run about $90 a bit, oh. so you got to be really <laughs> careful with them. Holy cow. Luckily, my guy's cool, and he'll warranty them for me. Oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, these, these will chew through anything. Wow, that's neat. So these are this is almost like the worst case scenario yeah. drawer, kind of. <laughs> And then the bottom drawer is the catch-all for tool bags and boxes. Oh, nice. So like over here, I've got my coolant refilling kit. So you hook it up to the surge tank on the truck. Oh, OK, yeah. You run air, pull a vacuum, it'll yeah. re. So you don't have to bleed. Because bleeding a 16, 14 gallon system is a nightmare. <laughs> I bet. So yeah, it just recovers all the coolant. And then a pressure testing kit, spare nice. clamps, things of that nature. And then yeah, my air hammer is buried over in this corner somewhere. What kind of air hammer is it? Uh, it's a Cornwell air hammer. Oh, is it? Yep. How's that treat you? I'll uh, let you guess what color it is. Uh, green? <laughs> yep. I actually really like it. I I had a snap on one, and a friend of mine had this Cornwell one, and I actually favored the Cornwell over the snap on. Really? Yeah. That's, I, like, I think that looks like a long barrel. Yeah, it, 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 I don't That's know sweet. exactly. I forget the specs on it, but it hits pretty hard. I've never had a complaint with it. That's awesome. So. Cool. That's a massive drawer. Yeah. Goodness. So I went over the power drawer. Over uh -huh. here just got kind of miscellaneous stuff, receipts, tool catalogs, USB connector to get plugged into the trucks for running software. So is this like a Bluetooth connector? Yep. So this can run USB. You plug in this cable on the bottom right here, uh -huh. USB or run Bluetooth for Cummins and Packard, oh, wow. which is nice in the winter. I can do diag when it's snowing outside from my toolbox. Whoa. That's, so it just, just goes off your computer? Yep, yeah, so it just oh, cool. Bluetooths right to the laptop. Right on. And then you can run the Cummins software or the Packar software. The only thing is doing like software updates. You've oh. got to be hardwired in. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's nice. Run nice. all the check engine lights, everything like that from inside. That's cool. Huh. So yeah, just kind of miscellaneous right here. So I've got my consumables in here. A lot of the like turbochargers and everything will come with install kits that have extra sealing washers. Um, just kind of miscellaneous O-rings that don't get used. Any kind of extra parts end up right here. Zip ties, Loctite. Yeah, that's a nice tray, like organizer. Yeah, tray. it's a Matco. Oh, is it? Yep, Matco. That's sweet. So all the little organizers are magnetic, so you can move them around oh, and kind okay. of customize the size of them. Yeah. Because before all this was just in a pile. Right. So. Oh, that's cool. Next one is the one that I'm not proud of. It's my electrical <laughs> drawer, and it's a mess. Uh, it's hard to not have a mess when you have like a bunch of wires. Yeah, exactly. Everywhere. So yeah, just torch. I've got my multimeter right here, power probe here. What kind of meter is it? So it's a snap-on meter. It's not the super fancy one, but it gets the job done. Oh yeah. So. Oh, that one's, that one's awesome. Yeah. Auto ranging. Yep. Yeah, it gets the job done. I'm gonna upgrade to the digital one. Just 
Oh, like the big face one? Just because I like how it looks. Yeah, those are pretty sweet. They have one that uh, connects like Bluetooth to your yep. phone and stuff. That's cool. I don't know if I'll go that fancy. <laughs> that's a little that's a little excessive in my opinion. Uh, but just little consumables like our felt tape, some oh, yeah. connectors, and some electrical tape over here. So you have the Power Probe 4. Yep. Does that have like a bigger screen on it? Or what's the difference between So the... kind of everything on it's bigger. Is it? So it's a lot fatter oh, on the top yeah. of the body. Huh. And then the connector as well is a lot bigger just wow. because of all the functions that it has that you can ask me what they are and I'm not going to be able to tell yeah. you. <laughs> Man. Um, I bought it because my three, I broke the screen. And oh, it was going to be $100 to replace it or another couple hundred for this one. Yeah. So why not Might upgrade? Well, yeah. yeah. I will say the extension cable for this was so that's your extension cable oh my for gosh it. that's huge about 180 dollars for Holy that extension God. which i was not expecting i just said hey <laughs> order me the extension and he said yeah you got it and i'm like hey why is there an extra 180 dollars on my account so, oh gosh well at least now you have it yep but yeah just extra wire loom you get some heat shrink connector tools and then anytime we replace a wiring harness that's not warranty and doesn't have to be sent back, I'll trim all the connectors off of it. Oh, that's a good idea. Just in case they ever have to repin one. Yeah. And then like your test lead kit from Cummins for all their connectors that has all their specific pins. Oh, wow. Oh man, they all have like little alligator clips on yep. them, huh? Yeah, they clip right on the multimeter, right oh, on the power cool. probe. It's really convenient. It's an expensive kit, but it, it's worth the money. Hey, I bet you could use that on a lot more than just like Cummins. Yeah, so it's Cummins branded, but it fits most of the Packard connectors. Really? And then like I've used it on my Volkswagen before. Oh, that's cool. Used it on some Silverados. Like it, it's pretty universal. Nice. But it's all pre-built. And what's nice is you can warranty them individually too. So like these oh, little cool. guys break all the time. Yeah. So you can just chase up the part number and just get individual ones, sets, or you can buy a whole nother set, whatever you want. Oh man. And we have Cummins 10 minutes down the road, so. Nice. And then down here, pretty much just sprays, cleaning for the box, nice. hand wipes, WD-40. Cool. Kind of stuff I don't like sitting out because it all drips out. Yeah. I'm kind of anal about that. Nice. But, yeah. That's sweet. Gosh, and I love it. I run a little cart over here. So that box is full of extra gaskets and seals for pack cars. Oh, wow. Just because they send way too much <laughs> stuff and all their kits. Yeah. And then a workbench that I forgot to clean. So yeah. So this is your cart? Yep. That poor guy. Like, yeah. yeah, it's it's been used and abused. Holy cow. Yeah. That uh, that poor cart. <laughs> it's about the best yeah. way you could have said it. Yeah. <laughs> it looks heavy duty. This because this isn't like a Harbor Freight cart, is no, it? No, no. That's just like super made out of scrap. <laughs> yeah. It, it's been scrap its whole wow. life. Wow. That's cool. And, and then that... I just put the cardboard down so that normally these honeycombs aren't full. Oh, um, gotcha, just, yeah. It just catches all the oil and everything <laughs> of all the turbos that get set on it, gotcha, so yeah. I don't have to clean it. Yeah, that is so awesome. Well, Gage, thank you so much for uh, showing me your box. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, Appreciate you coming by. Give me a tour. Man, that's just so sweet. Goodness. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. This is, this is different. But until uh, the next one, we'll see you.